Let's see this Euler's formula. This identity e to the power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta is called the Euler's formula. So what is the advantage of this Euler's formula? Suppose complex number I am representing as z is equal to x plus i y. Then I can write it in polar form as r times cos theta plus i sin theta. This cos theta plus i sin theta I can write it as e to the power i theta. So the whole complex number can be written as z is equal to like this z is equal to r e to the power i theta. It's very easy to multiply this exponential that is e to the power i theta. Now let's see how do we represent product of two complex numbers. Suppose I have been given two complex numbers. First one is say z1 is equal to r1 e to the power i theta 1. So this is my first complex number. I have represented it using this blue vector and this angle is theta 1 because this the argument here is theta 1 and the second complex number is z2 is equal to r2 e to the power i theta 2. So this is my second complex number r2 is the modulus and theta 2 is this angle. When you multiply these two numbers you will get z1 z2 is equal to r1 r2 e to the power i. Now this will become theta 1 plus theta 2. So the product which is given by this red line this is a product z1 z2 and the angle will be theta 1 plus theta 2. So effectively this vector has been rotated anti-clockwise by this angle theta 1. So if this complex number z2 it is being multiplied by this complex number z1. So this vector z2 is being rotated like this by an angle theta 1 that when a complex number is multiplied by any other number it gets rotated or it gets shifted in anti-clockwise direction by the argument of the number by which it is being multiplied. So we can write that argument of z1 multiplied by z2 is equal to argument of z1 plus argument of z2. This is z1 z2 argument is theta 1 plus theta 2 is equal to this is theta 1 plus theta 2. The same thing for quotient also I can write as argument of z1 divided by z2 is equal to argument of z1 minus argument of z2. Why this minus will come here? Let me explain. What will be argument of 1 by z2? Can you tell what will be this? If your z2 is r2 e to the power i theta 2 then 1 by z2 will be 1 by r2 and e to the power minus i theta 2. So the argument of 1 by z2 is equal to minus argument of z2. That argument of z1 by z2 I can write as z1 into 1 by z2 is equal to argument of z1 plus argument of 1 by z2. So what is argument of 1 by z2? This is nothing but minus argument z1. So this is argument of z1 minus argument of z2. So you can say that argument of z1 by z2 is equal to argument of z1 minus argument of z2. Suppose I have been given a complex number which is represented by this vector and this complex number is z is equal to r e to the power i theta. Angle which this will make with this x axis is theta. So if this vector z is equal to r e to the power i theta, if I multiply it with say another number e to the power i alpha, this, this is alpha, this is not infinity. So what you will get the product will be r times e to the power i theta plus alpha. So the product will be this vector and this this angle will be alpha. What has happened when a complex number this was the complex number r e to the power i theta when it is multiplied 
by an another complex number it gets rotated in this anti clockwise direction by this angle alpha and this angle alpha is the argument of the number which is multiplying my original complex number suppose i have a complex number given by z not here which lies here another complex number is z1 which lies here and another complex number is z2 which lies here and this angle is theta okay so what i can say about argument of these two complex numbers i can say that argument of z2 minus z0 obviously this argument is greater than the argument of z1 minus z0 this is the argument of z1 minus z0 plus theta if i bring this thing this term this side you will get argument of z2 minus z0 minus argument of z1 minus z0 is equal to theta and then we know that argument of two complex numbers suppose z1 by z2 is equal to argument of z1 minus argument of z2 so using this rule i can simplify this whole thing and i will write argument of z2 minus z0 divided by z1 minus z0 is equal to theta so this is the way of representing angle between two lines if you have been given that angle between two lines like this line representing z1 z0 and this line z2 z0 is theta so you can write it as argument of z2 minus z0 divided by z1 minus z0 is equal to theta remember this equation does not say anything about the relative magnitude of these two lines they may be entirely different this may be say 1 this may be 10 this may be 100 this may be 2000 whatever so this formula does not talk anything about the magnitude of these two line segments or magnitude of these two complex numbers because whenever we are dealing with rotation of complex numbers or when we are dealing with argument of complex numbers we are least bothered about the magnitude of these lines or magnitude of these complex numbers now we will see one very important case that is of an equilateral triangle we will see what is the condition which can we will see what is the condition under which a triangle given in a complex plane becomes an equilateral triangle i will solve this problem using three different methods you can ask me why i should solve the same problem using three different methods i would suggest that you should go through each of the method of solving this problem of finding condition of an equilateral triangle because each method has got because each method uses different property of the triangle and uses different steps and each method plays with the complex numbers in different manner let's say i have been given a triangle and these are my three vertices z1 z2 and z3 let's solve this problem using first method first of all you should see that since this is z2 and this is z1 so what i can say about this vector this is z2 minus z1 this we have seen earlier similarly what is this vector this is z3 minus z2 and what will be this vector this will be z1 minus z3 for any triangle the sides can be represented like this z2 minus z1 z3 minus z2 and z1 minus z3 till now i have not made use of any of the property of an equilateral triangle so using simple rule of vector addition what you can say when you add these three vectors you will get zero so i can write as z2 minus z1 plus z3 minus z2 plus z1 minus z3 is equal to zero even if you don't use of the property of this vector addition that some of these three vectors are zero just by looking at these three brackets what i can say that this plus this plus this is equal to zero if i take conjugate of these things then also this will also be equal to zero why because if a complex number z is zero then conjugate of z will also be zero what i can say about z2 minus z1 conjugate 
this will be equal to modulus of z2 minus z1 whole square divided by z2 minus z1 because any complex number conjugate is equal to modulus z square divided by z this all of us know so using this thing i have used here z2 minus z1 whole square divided by z2 minus z1 plus similarly the other two terms that is z3 minus z2 whole square divided by z3 minus z2 plus this will become z1 minus z3 modulus whole square divided by z1 minus z3 is equal to 0. So we have reached up till this step without using any property of equilateral triangle. So this equation is valid for any arbitrary triangle. Now what we will do, we will make use of the property of the equilateral triangle. We will make use of the property that if this triangle is equilateral, then all these three modulus are equal because the length of the side has to be equal. So if these three modulus are equal, these this is equal to this is equal to this. So I can remove these from the numerator because I can divide them by the common factor. The, these three will come out common and I can divide them because this is zero this side. So I will get 1 by z2 minus z1 plus 1 by z3 minus z2 plus 1 by z1 minus z3 is equal to 0. So this is the condition for the triangle z1, z2, z3 to be equilateral the same condition can be represented in another way what will you do you take lcm and then you multiply so ultimately you will get then you will in numerator you will have z3 minus z2 into z1 minus z3 plus multiplied by two terms plus again multiplied by two terms is equal to zero so this whole thing is zero so numerator has to be zero if you expand all these brackets you will get very simple expression that z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square is equal to z1 z2 plus z2 z3 plus z1 z3. So using the very simple property, using the very obvious property that all the sides of an equilateral triangle are of equal length, we have derived the condition first in this form and another in this form and these two are exactly same. Now let's get the same condition using a different method and if this is an equilateral triangle then obviously all the sides are of equal length and all the angles are also equal equal to 60 degree or pi by 3. I can say that this complex number that is z3 minus z1 will be equal to this complex number z2 minus z1 and it is rotated by an angle pi by 3 so this is e i pi by 3 so this vector i can obtain by rotating this vector by an angle pi by 3 now what is this vector this vector is continuation of this vector so this is z3 minus z2 so this vector z3 minus z2 has been obtained by rotation of this line and what is this line this is z3 minus z1 z3 minus z1 and this also by an angle pi by 3 this angle is also pi by 3 so i have obtained two conditions you can write the third condition also but that will not give you any extra information so if you just divide these two conditions this and this will be cancelled so if you divide and these two will be cancelled and you get a condition you multiply them you will get the same condition which we had got earlier and that was z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square is equal to z1 z2 plus z2 z3 plus z1 z3 this is the second method now what's the third method also in the second method we had written that z3 minus z2 that is this vector is equal to z3 minus z1 e to the power i pi by 3 
okay after this what i will do you bring this this side so when i when i bring this this side this will be is equal to e to the power i pi by 3 up till this step it is very clear that z3 minus z2 divided by z3 minus z1 is equal to e to the power i pi by 3 after this let's cube both the sides so you will get z3 minus z2 whole cube divided by z3 minus z1 is equal to e to the power i pi by 3 if you cube this thing i pi by 3 to the power 3 you will get e to the power i pi which is minus 1 so this is minus 1 i can write now z3 minus z2 whole cube is equal to minus z3 minus z1 whole cube i bring it this side then this minus will become plus this is equal to zero you can say it is in form a cube plus b cube is equal to zero this is a cube plus b cube is equal to zero where a is z3 minus z2 and b is z3 minus z1 now we can factorize a cube plus b cube is equal to zero we can write it as a plus b into a square minus a b plus b square is equal to zero if you write a plus b you will get here z3 2z3 minus z1 minus z2 and something inside which will be a square minus a b plus b square where a is this thing and b is this thing this product of these two numbers is zero of course first of all this cannot be zero why because z3 is not equal to z1 plus z2 by 2 because the moment if your z3 is equal to z1 plus z2 by 2 then what you are saying you are saying that z3 is the midpoint of z1 and z2 that cannot be true because we have started with an equilateral triangle or rather we have started with an triangle so in any triangle this z3 cannot be equal to z1 plus z2 by 2 so this term first term can never be equal to 0 so the second term has to be 0 and if you expand this second term ultimately you will get the same condition which we had got earlier this is not equal to 0 because if it is equal to 0 then you will have z3 is equal to z1 plus z2 by 2 which is not possible because z1 z2 z3 is a triangle okay so let's remove this thing so the second factor has to be 0 that is a square minus a b plus b square is equal to 0 now if you expand it then you ultimately you will get the same condition z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square is equal to z1 z2 plus z2 z3 plus z1 z3 so the same problem or the same condition of equilateral triangle i have derived using print methods and remember all these conditions are the converse is also true that if a triangle satisfies this condition then that triangle has to be equilateral the converse can also be proved very easily because